Fitness and health tracking give us powerful tools to analyze not just our activities, but also what happens to our bodies throughout the day, be it energy levels, steps, heart rate, sleep patterns, menstrual cycles, and oftentimes much more. As great as this technology can be to offer us insights and data related to our health, there are many privacy and security implications over who controls this information. Today I want to offer you countless health and fitness tracking options that fit your privacy needs. There are many that work for several different use cases and threat models, so you'll likely have an option perfect for you. This video is broken up into three parts. The first dives into applications, the second smartwatches and fitness devices, and the third alternative creative options. At the end, I'll cover my personal setup for both fitness and health tracking that I have been more than happy with. Before starting, I want to define a couple terms I'll be using. Fitness tracking refers to tracking a specific physical activity, like a run, bike, or anything that is a one-time event you click start and go. Health tracking will refer to constant data collection that takes place all day with no user input. These are things like heart rate and steps throughout the day. Let's begin with applications. Most apps are not designed for health tracking, but rather fitness tracking. On iOS, it tends to be rather limited with privacy-oriented open source options, and this area isn't too different. If you want something that advertises privacy, the main app I found was TrackMe Fitness Tracker, which keeps all data on your device, no accounts needed. It hasn't been updated in a year, although it still works on iOS 13. This seems like an okay, simple option for most people on iOS. Outside of this, you're pretty much stuck with more mainstream options like Strava, Nike, Under Armour, and the countless other apps. If you're going this route, I'd read through the privacy policies and previous history of each company to help you make your decision. It's important to mention that a lot of these apps only require an email if an account is needed at all, so it's easy to leave out direct personal information and only starting your activities away from your home or any other identifiable location. This way, there's not that much data to tie back to you as an individual. I wish we had more options on iOS, but that's kind of where things are today. Moving to Android. F-Droid, the open source app store you can use on any Android device, gives us some good options. Open Tracks is regularly updated with cool features and no internet access. VetoTrack is another good option from F-Droid, as well as RunnerUp. And I'd try all to see what you prefer, as each seem to have pros and cons. Like iOS, you obviously still have access to the more mainstream options, but in my opinion, unless there's something you specifically need, these FOSS options on Android are extremely well done and should be good enough for most people. If they're not, the process is the same as iOS, and you're going to have to decide what mainstream app to go with as well as what kind of information you're comfortable sharing. As for Linux, outside Activity Tracker from OpenStore, I haven't found a great fitness tracker designed for mobile Linux devices. Let me know in the comments if I missed something. I did find a tool called the Sports Tracker for Desktop, which extracts data from devices that do fitness tracking, which we're about to cover. So let's go into part two. Smartwatches and fitness devices are commonly just thrown into the assumption of it's an Apple Watch, when in reality these devices greatly vary. Let's start with the most basic popular options designed to be synced with your mobile device. You can obviously pick up an Apple Watch. I used to call the Apple Watch a pathetic fitness tracker as they clearly put health tracking before fitness tracking by not including basic things like GPS. However, the Apple Watch has evolved rather nicely over the years, making it a decent option. If you are already in the Apple ecosystem with no plans of leaving, the Apple Watch isn't a terrible option for decent out-of-the-box privacy and security. Things drastically change though when looking at some Android-specific watches, which tend to have much worse integration with their ecosystems as well as lackluster privacy practices. One can argue Android does allow more functionality, but this doesn't solve the main concerns with most mainstream Android smartwatches, which in general just kinda suck. Now, what is most overlooked is watches built from the ground up for fitness tracking. This includes watches from Garmin, Polar, Suunto, Whoop, and more. First, from a fitness perspective, these are built for activity tracking. 
they arguably have some of the most advanced tools built for athletes. If you're someone who's competitive in their specific sport, you may benefit from the specificity of some of these watches. Second, over the last several years, most fitness trackers from these companies also include extensive health tracking, making them great for daily vitals and how that corresponds with your exercise. Third, most of these options, I can attest to both Garmin Forerunners and most Polar watches, don't require a phone or account whatsoever to function, meaning you'll get a majority of functionality directly on the watch without ever leaving the device. If you do want the extra features that are unable to be accessed on a watch, most support manual computer syncing, as well as obviously phone supports for both syncing and a more traditional smartwatch experience. Be careful though, as Fitbits, for example, don't tend to have a real user interface on the watch and are heavily dependent on the mobile app. Make sure to read the manual and watch some setup guides on YouTube for the specific watch you're looking for to understand its functionality before you buy it. I do want to add that at least Garmin Forerunners can be plugged directly into computers without needing Garmin software to access the files with your activities. Meaning, you don't need Garmin for anything. It's been this way for years, since the ancient Forerunner 10, and it allows you to manually view activities using any software that handles the file extension. This is great if you want to save your runs on your computer with full control over your data, but don't want a Garmin account. You can do whatever you want with this, including keeping your activities in a Veracrypt container, and it never touches the internet if you want that level of control. The last smartwatch I wanted to mention was recently brought to my attention from one of the folks at Privacy Tools IO and it's Asteroid OS, an open source OS for smartwatches. You can install or dual boot this on several different watches listed on their site, and it syncs using their own app from the open source Asteroid App Store for Android, or using the Telescope app for Ubuntu Touch, making this the most FOSS and privacy respecting option out there for users who wanna go out of their way to set this up. To recap, smartwatches aren't just an Apple watch. They come in many different shapes and sizes. Some are dependent on phones, some work completely independently without even needing an account, and there is even a fully open source option available to you if that's the direction you want to head. Believe it or not, there are still a couple more options you have as a user. Let's go into part three. I'll be using examples, but this is more of a think outside the box section. I used to have one of these, an iPod Nano 6th generation with a clip. Believe it or not, the 6th and 7th generation iPod Nano include a timer, stopwatch, and basic activity tracking with a pedometer used for distance. This may be enough for you depending on your needs. Similarly, maybe you just need a basic pedometer and you can multiply the steps by your stride length. You can pretty easily calculate that to get a semi-accurate distance reading. Maybe you want to avoid tech altogether. There is something to be said about going outside with zero technology as it's very freeing and something I like doing myself every once in a while. You can put your route into most mapping programs on your computer and track the distance before your activity, then just start a stopwatch on your phone before starting and stop when you are done. You now have distance, time, and pace calculated with the mental freedom of avoiding technology altogether. We have so many gadgets already at our disposal, so don't overlook the basics. It may be all you need, and you likely have something laying around that already does the job for you. Now, what do I do myself, and what do I recommend to most of you watching? I'm a huge runner, pretty competitively, and it's something I do 50 plus miles a week during the season. I use the Garmin Forerunner 245, which can be used just from the watch with no account, and it's not just for running. It supports pretty much every activity, as well as all the major vitals like heart rate, sleep, and much more. They also have some simpler, cheaper options that aren't quite as fancy as the 245. You can probably get a Forerunner 10 or 15 used for a super cheap price, and it doesn't even support phone syncing, but it has full GPS support with basic features designed around fitness tracking. There are much fancier options as well. I do choose to sync my runs to the app on my phone, but I don't constantly sync and use it as a smartwatch. I just manually enable Bluetooth after my runs to sync the run. This is really no different than a computer sync in terms of functionality. I can confirm the Garmin Connect app works A-OK -okay without Google Play services, which is awesome for Graphene OS users. Check out our review of that ROM. I'll leave a link below to some different Garmin Forerunner options that you can take a look at, so check that out and see if they work for you. It's an awesome setup, and the price variations should apply to almost all viewers watching, and the computer file transfer perks are just awesome for users wanting absolute full control over their activities and data. I really hope this video gave you plenty of different options that will work for your specific use case, and I wish you luck with your goals, whatever they may be. Go kill it.
Again, I'll leave some links with some watches I personally recommend in the description, even the Apple Watch and some other things I talked about to give you some options to explore. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like and subscribe to our channel to catch our future content. It really does help us out. Lastly, thank you to our patrons who are supporting our work and spreading privacy and security to the masses. Let's keep that community growing. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll see you next time. Ribbit. 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 Ribbit.